that bending down process is what makes everything alive in a way which you cannot imagine unless that actual surrender happens. Ruth. Yes, Ruth. Firstly, I would like to say what an absolute delight and pleasure it has been to meet you and to be here and to sit in this energy. Um, my question is about embodiment and consciousness to a greater degree. The path of surrender I have been really fortunate to find just through uh, grief and loss. And when I hear you speak, about the Antar Guru, I know I have connected to, to that in me. And for all the big things in my life, there is a very strong communication, which I'm so grateful for because it does create flow and harmony and a willingness just to go with life on life's terms. When it comes so to the physical body, I often find that I don't feel I am as present as I could be. Despite listening to many teachers, including Advaita teachers, I have had no big, dramatic, um, spiritual peak experiences. For me, that means life is asking me to trust without any proof of anything. All that happens is stillness and love. So the question is, can you give um, advice for greater embodiment of the present moment? Ruth, in the practice of being in this moment and in that sense tuning in entirely to thisness, there are no real peak experiences. The experiences are subtle and they, they move increasingly into a state of surrender. So you are in surrender to the Antar Guru and you actually flow, as you said before, with that impulse. You refuse the loud noise of the ego. What happens is as you proceed along this path, you're more and more this instrument, so there is no sudden peak experience. It's more a deeper and deeper humility in the system, but also more coherence in the materiality. So you're experiences will be taking you into the cellular nature of the body. Like literally, you'll start to feel this materiality becoming very, very real in a way you've never known before. So that is something, if you want to call a peak experience, you can call. Uh, you will also experience an ability to really explore and, and deeply embrace emotions which you've been detached from when you are in a more cosmic state and less terrestrial one. So the emotions become very, very vivid and very deep and you are more the master of those emotions and less the victim. Mm. That is another clear thing, but it's not a peak experience, it's deep, it's growing, growing. You know, when there is something very sad that happens, you can actually experience it to an extent you could not experience when you are up in a trance or cosmic state. Yeah. And the same goes with the conceptual, your ability to think, your ability to, to actually create thoughts, your ability for logical thought processes, for inference, all of those abilities, they just sharpen to an extent which 
is unimaginable before that. Also, your occult abilities, siddhis, these are things which just appear in a, in a way which is almost unimaginable before. So, it is not a peak experience you're looking at, but rather deepening self-realization, deepening connect with the Source, and a greater ability to discern when the ego is pushing you into action, which is for sure going to bring you suffering. So that is where you start to move. And the key to that is literally in every moment trying to be aware, is this action, the urge to that action, emerging from a truth impulse, or is it emerging from the loud ego? This is a very simple practice, but very challenging. You keep on asking, you keep on asking, you keep on training yourself to be that clear and that conscious of the source of your urge to action. That is the key, because you just... And then life becomes very... Uh, very vibrant, very real, much more real than it has been before. Is there any practices that you have found particularly effective? Anything you would suggest for the consciousness to take up home more? Well, the, the, the point is that if you train yourself to pull yourself to this moment, the moment you catch yourself either in the past or in the future, and you pull yourself to this moment, the humility sets in and the surrender state sets in and when that sets in the senses will do what they have to do if you, Ruth, are in that state of surrender. And yes, I mean, there are Kriyas which are taught here but not in this setup because it's very short, they take time and also these are open satsangs and we don't have a place either for uh, to show those kriyas and to do them. There are sometimes uh, immersives where those are taught, not always, but... So there is no program here. I don't have a system. A system evolves for each individual according to their... according to their perception, according to what they feel is, is right for them. So there are some kriyas which are taught for example, dealing with the senses. But generally, that bending down process is what makes everything alive in a way which you cannot imagine unless that actual surrender happens. So it goes on its own. Mm. You don't have to sit there and do it. Yes, you can train yourself to do it better by learning some Kriyas. Um, and the other question is actually about consciousness and filmmaking. I'm a filmmaker, and for the last 20 years, one project I have been trying to make and not succeeding is actually about a woman coming into her body, um, and it's a love story. As a filmmaker, I, I'm looking for the right approach to this film to unlock the telling of it or the, even the attracting what it needs in order to be made. My question is, do you, do you think there is that connection that, it, that in order for a piece of work or a piece of film to have that power that I have to really be very vigilant about what I know, really know and, and not try to be communicating something that's an idea? Firstly, it's very hard to make a film. That is the first thing to remember that it's one of the more difficult endeavours a human being can undertake. As I know. <laughs> and so the fact that you haven't made the film as yet uh, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you know, you're not attracting the right energies to make it happen. Making a film is one of the most challenging things you can undertake. So seen from that point of view, uh, it's, it's all right that you haven't 
आयुष्मान भवा एंड सो वॉट यू नीड टू पहाप्स लुक एट इज हाउ डीपली आर यू एक्चुअली कनेक्टेड विथ द कोर और सेंटर ऑफ दैट प्रोजेक्ट वेरी डीपली you can make a film about something which you don't know experientially that you only know conceptually you can do that but it will not carry the same force as if you have experienced it mm-hmm. yourself yes so perhaps the step is to practice this practice that is described here because that is your key to coming fully into the body you will be in the system if you undertake this practice and it has to be diligent and it has to be it is a sadhana it is a sadhana you know it's really undertaking it seriously and after a while you move into that state of being in a state of samarpan humility surrender to the extent where the whole system the whole body starts to reverberate with that samarpanam and when that happens you will know what it means to have re populated the materiality of your system that is the key to it thank you and then the film will automatically happen the the, uh, the entire thing will fall into place it just always happens like that thank you and just one thing to say aaron actually the called me here and i have no history i don't know the place um and i feel aaron actually is speaking through you so i wanted to thank you thank you very much